This is an example of the timing diagram for the 4-bit multiplier that was designed in Lab 6. So I just want to go through this um, timing diagram for this example where we're multiplying uh, the A input, which is a binary 7, and the B input, which is a binary 6. And I'm just using this example just to illustrate um, what's occurring as far as the shift register contents and the accumulator uh, contents. So you can see um, we've got all our inputs up here and if you just take the state diagram that we used for our design and you just um, write in the values for each of the states for the enter, SR select, accumulator load, and accumulator clear, you'll get uh, this top portion of the timing diagram. Um, now remember the accumulator load um, once we get into the bit states its values for bit 0 through bit 3 um, just take on the bit values of input B. So you can see here that um, since we're using the binary 6 for B that accumulator load is 0 here during this time interval, 1 here, 1 here, 0 here. Okay, so that's a 0. Okay, um, but you know the SR select, the enter, and accumulated clear values. They come directly from the state diagram for each of the states, bit 0 through bit 3. Okay, again, um, if you look at the state diagram, the accumulator load uh, value just takes on the value of the B input. Okay, and again, um, the A input that we're using in this multiplication is a binary 7, right? So we're just doing 7 times 6, so our result, of course, should be 42. Now, just recall, um, from the design that the shift register um, when its select lines are both zero that's when it's holding zero one is when the shift register gets loaded and the load input of the shift register is connected to the A input so when we load the shift register we're loading it with um, input A and then one zero is when it's shifting right, one one is shifting left. Since we're multiplying, we're just shifting right, so we never shift left in this um, in this application. And then the accumulator load. Uh, remember that when that's zero, the accumulator just gonna uh, the accumulator contents are just gonna stay the same. And when the accumulator load input is a one, that's when the contents of the accumulator will change to um, the addition of uh, the contents of the accumulator uh, in the shift register content. So when the accumulator load input is 1, uh, the shift register contents at that time are just going to be added to what's already in the accumulator. So this is how the accumulator keeps track of a running total as, as we discussed. Okay, so um, let's see how we get these uh, different contents here for the shift register and for the accumulator. So our initial values, remember, uh, this is in our uh, design code. We made our initial values uh, equal to zero. And it's a rising edge triggered. You can see it right here. It's rising edge triggered. So at the time of this first rising edge of the clock, um, our SR select is equal to 1. Okay, this is a 1 here. It's hard to see. But our select for the um, shift register is equal to a 1. So that means at that time the shift register gets loaded with the value of input A, which is 7. So this is why you see a hex 0, 7 here. That's just A contents being loaded into the shift register at that time. Um, also at this time, the accumulator clear inputs a 1, so the accumulator gets cleared. Now the initial value was 0 anyway, but um, it, it's the clear is just going to keep it at 0. Okay, nothing different happens at this um, edge of this uh, clock pulse here. Okay, but now we get to 
uh, the beginning of bit zero state. So this is the rising edge of the bit zero state right here. So if we take a look um, now, this is a key point that right at this time, right at this time of this rising edge of the bit zero state, uh, the SR select changes from a one to a two. Okay, and we've talked about this before that when you have a change of input happening at the same time as the edge of the clock, you always take the value before the clock edge. So um, SR select is changing from a 1 to a 2 right at the time of this rising edge of the clock, but we take the value before. So since we're taking the value before, that means the shift register is loading at this time. So the A input just gets loaded in again. So that's why you see a 7 here. Right? It was 7 before. Um, it's 7 afterwards because the A input hasn't changed and it just gets loaded into the shift register again. So therefore there's no change in the shift register contents at this time. Um, also, right at the same time of this uh, rising edge of the clock at the beginning of the bit zero state, um, the accumulator clear is changing from a one to a zero. See right here. But again, when a change of an input occurs right on the clock edge, you take the value before, so that means the accumulator is being cleared, and that's why you see the accumulator content stay at zero at this time. Okay, so now we look at the next clock edge. We look at this clock edge at the beginning of uh, the bit one state, and the SR select right before is uh, a, bi a hex two or binary two. So that means we're shifting right. So a shift right occurs. And remember in our uh, shift register that we're using in lab six, a zero is what comes into the shift register. So we have a seven, right? A zero seven before and afterwards. A zero is going to come in and move all these bits over. This zero um, falls off the face of the earth. <laughs> and we're going to get this, right? So this is what we have before the shift right. This is what we have after the shift right. Right? So before shift right. And this is after shift right. So you see afterwards um, in hex we're going to have zero here for these four in E, right? Because one, 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 zero in binary is 14, which is E in hex. So you see, that's why you see hex zero E here. That's uh, after that right shift occurs with the zero coming into the shift register. Now, um, at this time right here, uh, the accumulator load, as you see, is changing from a zero to a one. But again, you take the value before when the input changes at the same time as the clock edge. So accumulator load is zero, so the accumulator doesn't get loaded, and it just keeps its previous value, which is zero. So you see here during state bit one, our, our shift register contents are hex zero e. Our accumulator contents are is zero. Okay, so now bit two the bit 2 state. So right here uh, at the beginning of the bit 2 state, this clock edge, uh, we look and the accumulator load is a 1. So that means the accumulator is going to get loaded. So it adds the shift register contents to the accumulator contents of 0 and that's 0 E. So you see this comes from the addition of these two here. And also uh, we get another shift right of the shift register. So the shift register contents go from what we had here, 0 E, to now we're going to have 0 okay, now we're going to have this after the, um, the bit 2 uh, clock edge. So this is in hex, this is 1 C. Okay, so that's why you see a 1C here. 
All right, so during the state of uh, bit two, here's our shift register contents, here's our accumulator contents. Okay, now bit three, uh, this rising edge right at the start of bit three, well, we get a shift right of the shift register contents, and you can work it out and see that it's going to give this new hex after that uh, shift right. And if we look at the accumulator load, well, right at that time of the bit 3 state, it's changing from a 1 to a 0. But again, anytime you have a change of input at the same time as the uh, clock edge, you take the value before. So accumulator loads a 1. So the accumulator uh, gets loaded. So it's going to add 1C and 0E. And that's what this addition right here is. And you can see it comes out to 2A hex. And 2A hex, okay, if you find the um, base 10 of that, it's 42 in base 10. So you see here's our result of 42 of the multiplication of this 7 times 6. Okay, now to finish this at, um, let's see, here at the beginning of the uh, hold state, this rising edge right here we look and that's just when the SR select is changing from uh, 2 to 0 so you take the value before which is 2 so it does another shift right so after uh, the shift right at this time we get this new hex and if you look at the accumulator load well the accumulator load is a 0 so it doesn't get loaded, it just keeps its previous value of 2a, which is our answer again of 42. And then the positive edge of the clock at the end of the hold state, if you look here, take the value of uh, SR select at that time, it's 0, which is the hold state, which means it's just going to, the shift register contents are just going to remain the same, so it keeps the same. Uh, contents here, the 70 hex, and our accumulator load at that time is zero, which means it doesn't get loaded, it just keeps the previous value of 2a hex, which again is our answer of 42. And this will just stay uh, the same until we get another enter input, and then this process will just start all over again. So the key point and the main reason I wanted to go through this example is just step you through how to come up with the contents of the shift register and the accumulator and the key point is that when you have an input changing at the same time as the clock edge you take the value before okay where people get in trouble is um, they take the value after uh, the clock edge when the input changes at the uh, same point and of course that's going to lead to an erroneous answer.